This is one of the exotic Kalart Victor 60 millimeter projector, which was definitely far from conventional and probably one of the heaviest machines in its class. They were very difficult to use, as you will see in a moment. This is the control panel on the back of the machine. And it has a large contained valve tube amplifier, which finding parts will be very difficult. The projector is self-contained with the real arm stored in the top lid. The second tier is the 6x9 speaker, which the power cord and the speaker cable are also stored. And this is the actual unit. To make things more confusing, this projector has three belts. One for the take-up. The second belt for the reversing feed. And the third belt for the rewind. The take-up belt has to be twisted a half turn and placed on the large or small pulley, whichever size film you are using. Next, the rewind belt has to be placed on the large pulley, and the reversing belt has to be twisted again a half turn and placed on the outside small pulley. So the standard controls are the motor and lamp switch, rewind and still capabilities, and the silent and sound speed. This projector has a reverse toggle switch which can be activated while the film is running. What's compelling about this machine it has a fail-safe mechanism built in with three film trips located within the film transport system. What that means is if the film loses its loop or something gets tangled up in the projector, the projector turns off automatically without further damage to the film. Unfortunately, this is the part of the projector I really don't like. The film has to run over the stationary sound drum or exciter lamp housing, which makes me just a bit uneasy. This is probably the oddest feature of the projector, where you have to thread the film from the back to the front of the projector, which probably terrorized more teachers when trying to set this thing up. For threading, I'll open the film gate and the two sprocket pad rollers and pull down about six feet of leader. Make the top loop and then place the film behind the first film trip and then over the film gate. Then place film under the second film trip, opening the sound tension roller, and then over the sound drum. Forming the bottom loop with your index finger, then opening the holdback sprocket pad roller, 
hold the film firmly on the drive gear. Now threading behind the third film trip and to the second take a pad roller. This inside loop has to have somewhat of slack so the film doesn't bind on the film trip. Now, using the inching knob, manually move the drivetrain to make sure everything that's threaded is in perspective. Then engage the clutch failsafe mechanism, and we're ready to run the movie.